Hi everyone, uh, Stevie GTR here, Anything Garage, and Anything Garage is next door, um, not the lathe and the miller machine, I'm not doing any, any work on that at the moment, um, although I'm still on with the hit and miss stationary engine I'm building, but um, I bought a TVR Chimera 450 which is the 4.6 uh, engine uh, from a Range Rover, uh, Discoveries etc which TVR I believe took and played around with them and altered them slightly and got some quite nice power out of them. It's rated at 285, whether it actually is 285 or not, I don't know. But um, the car were delivered the other day. Now I bought this on scene and you'd say that that is sacrilege, but there were a 100 photos, uh, roughly, might have been 50, 60, of the interior, another set of the underneath of the car, another set of the bodywork, another set of going out and driving the car. Now you couldn't go view this car, uh, this, this car, because uh, it was a classic car auction um, and it's not one where the car's at the auction, the, the car is at the customer's home and uh, what happens is you bid uh, and if you win and buy the car you then pay the commission to the company. Now, on this particular one that I bought, I'm not hiding anything because I'm not going to sell it, I'm kidding, it's a keeper. Uh, I paid £541, I think it was, commission to the company for doing the sale. Uh, and then the owner, uh, a guy called John, down in Macclesfield, I had to pay him £9,000. So basically I bought a 2001 uh, Mark III Chimera 450. Uh, with 71,000 miles on for 9,540. Now I were expecting to pay 15 to 18-ish grand for one. Admittedly, it, it, it's got a few little niggles and it wants some paintwork correction, which I've just got some paint actually. I ordered some paint, it's come today. So I'm gonna have a look at touching these little scratches up. There's a few little scratches where he'd been putting the roof in the boat and things like that that I'm going to try and touch up and re-lacquer and myself it's blue frost uh, metallic is the colour, pale metallic blue which you'll see in a minute anyway so the niggle, the first niggle was apart from the stirring being noctua which I think I found out what that is and I'm starting to address it uh, was that the engine were revving too high so I fire it up here and go for a drive. I do maybe four or five miles and I come to a roundabout. I dip the clutch to go down the gearbox and the revs are at 1500. And I slow down, obviously clutch down, put it into correct gear, foot round around and set off at 1500 RPM. Uh, and the only time it dropped below that and it'd be very rough was when I either got back home or to my destination and stopped. And after quite a period of time, it did drop a little bit, but it was still probably 1200. It was too high. It was ticking over too high. So doing loads of um, questions on the TVR forum, of which I'm now a member, and thank you guys, anyone that watches this, and please consider subscribing to my channel. It helps. Um, and I'll be doing quite a lot of videos on the uh, TVR, especially when I get my two-post lift of underneath, etc., and doing work on it. But uh, I'd, I'd read elsewhere and on the TVR forum that the stepper motor, the idle control motor, was uh, dubious on them. And looking deeper into it, he, I found that if you bought a cheap one, then expect whatever you're going to get. And if you're going to fit one, you really need to fit a genuine Land Rover one, of which I purchased at a grand cost of £128, 31 or something. And the, uh, today, it, it came the other day, and today I changed it. So I took off the original one, which was um, a, a goldy colour, and I fitted, this one's black. So I'm assuming it wasn't original. So we'll show the video, and it's on a short video, of what I've done and what I've found, and has it cured it. And then I'll come back and do a, an outro. Okay, let's get on with it. Right, everyone. Um, 
this is my new TVR, new to me TVR, and um, there are a few little issues that I've got. <coughs> I mentioned it on the TVR forum. One of them is the stirring is a bit stiff and doesn't return to its uh, home position when you've turned the corner, you have to pull it back. And I'm led to believe it's possibly uh, underneath here, I don't know if you can see it, but well, you won't, it's too dark. Under there is the stirring arm that comes from the stirring wheel through the bulkhead and into the wheel arch and then turns and goes across to the stirring rack. And there's a universal joint there and apparently they're seized up. Now, I've looked through all the service history that I got with this car and uh, on it there was a mention on one of the services that I'd done that the driver had noticed, had uh, reported a, a notchy stirring and they'd lubricated it, but that was some 10 years ago. Uh, so I think it might be that. Anyway, I've had an issue which is, uh, I've not driven the car much, but that item there, let's come back a bit so you can see that's the plenum. And that item there, which you can see is pretty much brand new, is the stepper motor to regulate the tick over of the car. And it, it has been changed, and I think on the invoice it was 78 quid. Now, doing a lot of reading up about those stepper motors, there's a lot of cheap ones that uh, don't always work properly. Now, as my first sort of part of call is to change that, other people have said speed sensor, um, what tells the ECU. Not sure about that. Basically what happens is you go out for your drive uh, and as you approach a roundabout or a T-junction or whatever and you slow down and ready to go down your gears and you dip your clutch and the revs are at 1500 RPM. Bearing in mind when you've set off it were about 900 or 1000 which is the standard tick over for these roughly. And uh, yeah. So it's at 1500, so you go down a gear, of course you've got no engine braking because your throttle's partly open and you don't want it to be. And it, they say it's that stepper motor or a speed control. Now, this car is a 2001 and it must have had this problem for many, many years because throughout all the service history, which I've got with it, I've got all the receipts and everything, is um, reports that erratic tick over and when I've been out for a run and it's warm and I come back home eventually and I mean eventually after quite some time it'll drop back down to a reasonable tick over however when it's down at that reasonable tick over it's very hunty so your, your ref count a little bit like this you know boom, 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 boom. it's not you'd think there were a spark plug issue ignition issue but i'm not going to even go down that route yet so under advice i bought a genuine land rover one original equipment manufacturer which has come today so that's a brand new one which we've to fit it's got the sealant already on the threads uh, and it gives you some measurements to do and I've checked that and that's correct so that is going to replace that one now that's black that one is like a goldy zinc plate colour it's zinc, zinc coated colour looks the same size and everything it's just a plug on the back to take off so I'm going to check that and swap it even though it appears to be a new one, I'm going to swap it for what I call a genuine Land Rover item. Because as I say, there's some people have said that on various forums that uh, it can be caused by that and fitting a, a cheap one. Now that were in the invoice what they'd charged him and I'm assuming they'd already banged a 20% on top for the profit. It was £78 I think, that one. This was £128 delivered, so there's a fair old bit of difference in the price of it. If it's no better, we're going to start looking for other things like air leaks, but 
Um, my attitude is if it's got an air leak, it'd always have an air leak and it'd do it from starting the car up, more or less. Um, but then you've got your cold start device on, so yeah, could be an air leak, don't know. But we're going to go through it methodically, and as I say, it's been to various TVR so-called specialists. Um, yeah, and he's still doing it. And my attitude is, if they can't fix it, I probably can't, and I might have to live with it. But I did uh, get a, 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 a post on the forum last night from a guy from TVR UK forum, from a guy who, this weekend or last weekend, just picked one up, just like this, a 450. Uh, and he said, it, it's perfect, not a problem. We take over, it, it's bang on. So they're not all like that, sir, is what he said. Okay, we'll move on and we'll stitch these videos together as we go along. So this is just a little adding uh, that I'm going to stick in between the film because I didn't show very well and it were out of focus. So this is the one that we've removed. Now to get this off, simply lift the clip and pull it. Four pins come off quite easily, no problem. And then you need either a large adjustable spanner don't use wrenches, you know, grips, because you'll mark it all, but that's a 32mm, if you can see that, 32mm, it's combi one, but I just use that end and come straight out. Now, i got a set of these, the work zone ones, and they're in a set back here. is not on but they weren't expensive something like a tenner for a lot but yeah great so the other thing I want to show you what and I tried to explain there but it says from the face here to the tip must be less than 28 millimeters now the one I fitted I think were about 26 this one is 22 22 millimeters you can see that uh, so that was way short and I suspect because it is a brand new one that haven't been on for very long looking at this tip it's clean and then that's how I took it out yeah that's how I took it out it was clean which tells me that wasn't touching the seat inside the plenum housing because I bobbed my finger in, my little finger, and I twisted it in on the seat. And when my finger come out, it was all sooty. So there was soot on that seat. It wasn't carbon, it was just some soot. However, there were, however, there was nothing on here, which tells me that that plunger has never actually sat on that seat. And I'm sure at some point, through its rev range or its speed or whatever you're doing, it, it does, presses on it, and it hasn't. So I'm not saying that doesn't work and that it's no good. You can adjust these, apparently you take the spring tension off and you can wind them out, although that seems awfully tight and doesn't look like it would want to come out. I wouldn't want to try and force it. Uh, so that 
that was just to let you know that you need a 32mm spanner, you need two fingers to pull the plug out, and then the only other thing which I'm going to show you shortly, you haven't seen yet, is a 316 Imperial Allen key. I may mention that in the video further on, but uh, metric, metric Allen keys don't fit this Allen screw that I adjusted. Basically this, what I'm doing is just purely for anybody who is going to have a go at changing one at some point, make it maybe a bit easier for you. So, right, I was looking for a, a, a tick over screw, a throttle stop, um, but there wasn't one, and I just assumed they'd done away with it. But then I watched a Land Rover guy with a 4.6, uh, Land Rover 99-2000 model and he was messing about with the idle speed control which seems to be an issue on a lot of models excuse me uh, and I saw him putting an Allen key down here now there's a plug missing out of here I'm sure there should be a plug in there but that takes an Allen key now the Allen key it takes is not metric it's imperial that's a, a 3 a 3 16 imperial allen key a metric one won't fit and that fits into there and what i did i screwed it in till it stopped and i counted and it were nearly four turns screwed out it tells you the base setting is two and a half so i screwed it in solid and out two and a half since that i've screwed it back in about a half so it's around two two turns now out and tick overs just on a thousand now you could say it wants to be a bit lower than that but yeah I don't know uh, I'm gonna run it at that but I'm happy if I can slow it down some more with this no problem but it would seem that that idle speed control stepper motor was not working properly and I do think I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it I think it hasn't been screwed out to the right length before they fitted it which is say it's got to be less than 28 mil, but not nothing. And I know for a fact it hadn't been touching the seat because of the soot on the seat, it, you know. Uh, so, so far, we've got that sorted. The steering that were notch it, I managed to lay under the car with some WD-40 and I've sprayed all the universal joint and I've wound the car from one side to other, lock to lock, uh, steadily, you've got power steering, and uh, lock to lock steering and then sprayed it some more and I'll do it again and again. Uh, but it, it, I've been out in the car and I've done about 10, 15 mile maybe, and it did seem okay, a lot, a lot better. Uh, it's just, I, I'm not used to this, and I used to have an MGB, in fact I've had two MGBs, and the steering wheel's sort of upright on them, and it's getting used to turning the steering wheel that's nearly upright again as opposed to further over. And I do think half of it is me just need to get used to driving this car again. Lots of paint work touching up to do. The paint's come today, which is a... There. Somebody said it's not Volkswagen, but it is. It, it's LE5U, which is TVR081, which is Blue Frost. And that's what it is. So I'll be mixing it and trying it later. I hope you found this useful. If you've got an erratic tick over. So my tick over, uh, when I started the car up at around 11, 1200, uh, when I'd gone on a run, car warmed up, when I went to pull up at junctions, it were revving at 1500 RPM, the car didn't want to stop, so it were all clutch work. Uh, and then when you sat off, you were slipping clutch and 1500 RPM and off she went. That's what it was. So it were, it were revving way too high at, at idle. Uh, and now it's not. It's not bad at all in that. I'm quite happy with that. As I say, I can trim it down a bit more if I wish. But I've only just got this car and I'm absolutely delighted with it. It's lovely, but it has had a lot of work on it over the years, as, as I'm sure every TVR has. And my next step is I've sold my motorbike ramp. I don't know if you could see it over there. How much time is that? And when that's gone, I can order a two post car lift, which is the aim, which I want to get this up in the air and have a play with it, see what it's like underneath. Uh, hi again, everyone. So we've done this um, new stepper motor 
and some fine adjustments and it's been a success and the car's running lots better so I, I went out for the drive in it I didn't do, put the video camera in the car because I need to make mountains for it and I will do but I haven't um, but I went for a long drive I think it was about 10 miles to my destination went over to brother-in-law's had a coffee and then came back uh, and the problem's gone so now when I take my foot off the accelerator um, and go down to go down a gear uh, it drops straight back down to around a thousand which I'm happy with you I could tweak it a bit lower uh, but I'm quite happy at that and we'll see how we go I may drop it a bit more later uh, and you'll have seen what I've done and uh, the results um, and I'm sure that stepper motor as I'll mention in the video you'll see it that the plunger wasn't touching the tapered seat inside the manifold in the plenum it was it was short it were it were away from it so thanks for watching guys don't forget click as a like uh, and a subscribe if you'd like to if not it don't matter it's just all for fun isn't it all right guys see you later and gals